thrill me. This show is part of the Thrill Me Podcast Network. Experience more on Facebook and YouTube. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Reveal Rob Show. I am, of course, your host, Reveal Rob, coming at you with all of the batasticness, awesomeness that is going on here on this episode. Uh, that's right, going to be reviewing The Batman, starring Robert Pattinson, the latest Batman film to come out from DC and Warner Brothers and all of the teams over there that released all these movies. Yeah, baby. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited, man. Kevin Owens just called out Stone Cold Steve Austin on tonight's Monday Night Raw, so that's leading to something. Wonder what's going to happen there. We shall see. We shall see. But hope everybody out there's been doing good. Me personally, been doing pretty good. Can't complain too much, man. Really excited to talk about the Batman as well as other news revolving. Of course, you get your standard mandatory DC and horror news on this show as well as anything else I can throw in there that seems interesting. And then I talk about whatever's releasing this week and then get to our review. Now, since the last time we talked, I have uh, fallen down some kind of like rabbit hole or wormhole or however you want to call it on the YouTube. You know, there's always that black hole you fall down into on the internet. Well, I fell into some kind of a random hole on YouTube. Um, over the weekend, I was found something called the Grim Life Collective, and I checked that out uh, because they're like shooting at filming locations. Then when I was going through, they has got like... They film at uh, graveyards of celebrities, and then they film at murder sites and all that stuff. Uh, you know, the famous murder sites like um, the Zodiac Killer or um, Ted Bundy or whatever. I was watching one of Bonnie the Clyde, Bonnie the Clyde, Bonnie and Clyde the other night, man. So it was it was a very interesting yeah, thing to fall down into, and I was just watching it like all day Sunday, man, just plowing through those, so... I'm still watching them now. Actually, before recording, I was watching um, filming location of the Goonies and the Lost Boys. So, great stuff, man. Highly recommend checking out Grim Life Collective if you need something to find on YouTube. Like I said, they do film some, you know, material that maybe some people would not be wanting to see, like graveyards and, you know, grave sites of celebrities and, you know, murder scenes and all that. But if you're into it and you want to check that stuff out, check it out, man. It's interesting. And again, this week I'm recording with the headset microphone. Didn't hear any complaints about last week's episode. I actually heard that there wasn't a whole lot of background noise uh, for once. So I remember, I think last week on the episode, I mentioned an airplane flying overhead. And, you know, it wasn't heard on the recording. Apparently, again, I don't listen back to my episodes. I don't know what happened. So, but I was told that um, the sound was good. So that's cool, man. Glad this is working out. This headset uh, going to work with some things. WWE 2K22 is coming out uh, later this week. I uh, plan on pre-ordering that tomorrow or someday this week before it comes out so I can get those three exclusive Undertakers. But that game's coming out. I want to do some uh, gameplay streaming for the first time ever. I'm thinking about you know doing that for sure over there on the Throw Me Podcast Network's YouTube page. Check that out, man. A lot of stuff going down over there. Uh, and more stuff to come, of course. And, of course, follow the Throw Me Network, um, Throw Me Podcast Network on Facebook for, you know, posts about news and posts about our shows and um, giveaways that will be coming. And um, we're doing the WrestleMania watch along for night one of WrestleMania. So a lot of stuff going on over there on the Throw Me Podcast Network that uh fun to check out, man. If you're a fan of wrestling or horror or music or movies or whatever, uh, follow, follow along with us, man. we got the Mr. Wonderful Show every 
Wednesday and uh, the Zach Speak Easy Thursdays and Hunter's podcast coming back pretty soon when uh, hunt season starts picking up, which could be sometime soon, man. Who knows? Pay attention to the uh, the, the channels, the pay, the Facebook page, and the YouTube where you know stuff will be coming together. But Halloween Horror Nights has been very very active on social media lately. Um, maybe it's just us getting our hopes up and all that stuff, but they've been very active. Seems like they're more active than ever. So could be something coming relatively soon. I wouldn't be too surprised if that uh, drops out of nowhere sometime soon. And man, my brother just dropped a new episode where he got to interview Henry Roland Gardner, dude. Thomas Ian Nichols or whatever. Um, I say, I, I do no disrespect to his name. I really, I think I got it right. It was just, you know, when those celebrities have the three names, you're like, ah, it's not as easy as Jonathan Taylor Thomas, you know, Thomas Ian Nichols or Nicholas or something like that. Um, you know, like I said, he was Henry Golden Gardner. He was in Halloween Resurrection, if you want to try to remember that movie. Uh, check that out as well. My brother got to interview him. Pretty good interview, man. And some good songs going on there. So, other than that, I think I've taken care of what needs to be taken care of. So let's go ahead and jump into the episode, shall we? Uh, with the first bit of news, we're going to go ahead and get the mandatory DC news because it fits with the review I'll be giving later on in this episode where we're talking the Batman. We're talking spinoffs for the Batman. Remember, it was announced a couple episodes ago on my show uh, that there would be some spinoffs of the Batman coming. And now we got some more information on one of them. Uh, before, there was the GCPD um, Gotham Police Department show that was highly talked about going into happening was the first spinoff that was announced and we're like kind of confused a couple people because it was the Gotham show that was on Fox not too long ago um I want to say it ended what maybe a year or two ago I don't know I fell off of the show but it, you know it wasn't all that long ago we're like oh we're getting another Gotham show okay that's interesting but all right let's see where that ends up going and um now we got some more information today from Matt Reeves himself and now the show is like taking a turn. Uh, according to Matt Reeves, quote, the GCPD thing, the story has kind of evolved. We've actually now moved more into the realm of exactly what would happen in the world of Arkham as it relates to coming off of our movie and some of the characters. It's like a horror movie or a haunted house that is Arkham. Let me run that back again. A, it's like a horror movie or a haunted house that is Arkham, as in Arkham freaking Asylum, dude. The show is now going to be about Arkham Asylum. Are you kidding me? It's horror. It's going to be like a horror movie haunted house. Are you freaking kidding me? Give it to me now. I want it. I want all of this. This sounds incredibly awesome. Can't wait to dive into that. That's going to be amazing. I mean, before, I was going to watch the the um, GCPD show they were doing before with, like, no problem. I was going to watch it, of course. But now you're telling me I'm getting Arkham Asylum? That's going to be incredible. I'm a hundred times more excited about that and ready to jump in and see what that's all about, man. That could be endless amounts of possibilities where they can go there. And again, it's horror related, which I freaking love. So give me all of that. And remember that this is not the only uh, side project or, you know, spinoff project that's coming from the Batman, uh, from Matt Reeves, the Batman. They are also working on the Penguin series that will have Colin Farrell returning to reprise the role of the character Oswald Coppelpot. Um, so that's interesting, man. I'm, I'm very interested in seeing how these shows turn out. It's going to be a good time. And, you know, we'll talk more about, uh, the Batman and Penguin later on in the episode, but let's go ahead and jump into some other news, shall we? Uh, kicking off with the fact that we're getting a sequel. Didn't see this coming, but we're getting a sequel to I Am Legend. Insane to think about. And, you know, not only are we getting a sequel, but the star of the first I Am Legend film, Will Smith, will be returning, but he'll also be joined by none other than Michael B. freaking Jordan, man. Will Smith and Michael B. Jordan teaming up for the first time ever um, to star and produce the film. Uh, now, if you haven't seen the first I Am Legend film, that movie followed a scientist who was a survivor in a man-made plague uh, that ended up transforming humans into, like, bloodthirsty mutants or whatever. So, it's interesting to see where the sequel goes. I want to see how this pans out. I want to see how that goes. And I kind of want to watch I Am Legend again. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. Um, I remember certain bits and pieces about it, but I don't remember the movie fully. I do remember the fact they had a Batman vs. Superman uh, poster in it well before Batman vs. Superman was even a movie. So, um, or even talked about being a movie or the DCEU being a thing or anything like that. So it's very interesting, um, to say the least, that we're getting a sequel here to I Am Legend. But you got Will Smith and Michael B. Jordan and uh, freaking Plague Times. Bloodthirsty Mutants. Can I have freaking bloodthirsty people? 
all over the place in this movie. Here you have people thirsting over Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting, man. We're going to see how this turns out. I uh, Color me interested in it for sure. And I'm going to check out I Am Legend probably sometime later this week. Because it has been a while. Uh, let's see. Other news. We got a new Alien film is in the works at uh, 20th Century Fox, which is, of course, Disney now. Um, this has been talked about before. I'm sure I talked about this on the show before, how there's movement going on in Alien. Now we got some more news that um, Don't Breathe and uh, Evil Dead director... Uh, Fidi Alvarez, probably said his name wrong. We know his sucking names. Uh, he apparently is attached to uh, direct and pin the script for the next Alien film. Uh, Ridley Scott, the director of the original 1979 movie, will be producing. Now, right now, I do have a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth because Fidi Alvarez was part of producing that Texas Chainsaw Massacre thing that was on Netflix. We're going to dive back into that because I don't want to get too negative again. But um, we'll see how this goes. His Evil Dead was good. Don't Breathe it was good. Um, was fine. I haven't seen Part 2 yet. I don't know if he has anything to do with Part 2, to be honest with you. Who knows? Um, somebody other than me, obviously. But Alien, I mean, that's cool. That's a franchise that's always been well talked about and has had numerous sequels since the success of the first film. You know, we had Aliens. We've had Alien 3, Alien Resurrection. You had Alien vs. Predator. I believe there's two Alien vs. Predator movies. Um, you had the Prometheus prequels, all that stuff. So... Uh, there's been video games of the Alien franchise, so this is interesting to see where this goes. Uh, we'll check it out. Obviously, stay tuned to the show, because there will be more information as time goes on. But as of right now, the movie has its script writer and director in Fidi Alvarez, and we'll see how that ends up going uh, in the future. Uh, let's see, a third Agatha Christie film is in the works. These are the uh, movies, the, um, the murder mystery films, Murder on the Orient Express, and the most recent, uh, Death on the Nile, which... I did see that movie in theaters. I did a review of it a couple episodes ago. Check that out. Um, there will be a third film that will be based on, of course, one of Agatha Christie's films or books. But um, it's going to be one of her lesser known novels from what we know. It will be set in post-war Venice. Um, and Kenneth, uh, what is this? I can't pronounce the last name. Kenneth Braun, who was, of course, in the other two movies, was once again attached to Star and Direct uh, with this um, Who Done It sequel. So... Cool, man. I like whodunits. Whodunits are fun. I enjoyed Death on the Nile. If you want more information, again, go check out the other review episode I did for that one. But, um, cool, dude. Bring it on, man. I like a good old whodunit. Um, we're in the middle of a renaissance, by the way. A career renaissance. A renaissance of Lindsay Lohan. Um, but she is apparently back in a bad, big bad way. Uh, of course, you know, Lindsay Lohan from, like, Mean Girls or Freaky Friday, Herbie Fully Loaded. Um, not it takes two. What was the other one? Um, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? The parent trap. That's what it is. As well as other things. I think she had a music career at some point in time. I do know she had a music career actually, cause I had one of her CDs. I may have had two of her CDs now that I think about it. Yeah. Anyways, um, you know, she is on her way back. She ran into some hard times, kind of kicked out of Hollywood for a while, went through her own thing, but it seems like she's on her way back and back with the Netflix. She has a movie coming out later this year on Netflix. It's a Christmas film from what I understand. Um, but she has signed a deal for two more original films to be released on the Netflix streaming platform at some time in the future of which of course she'll star. So good for her, man. It's good to see, um, career redemption for some people. I, like I said, I've saw some of her movies before. I mean, Mean Girls is amazing. Freaky Friday is awesome. Mostly because of Jamie Lee Curtis, let's be fair, but Lindsay was fine in the film. And like I said, I've listened to her music before and all that stuff. I was more of a Hillary Duff fan. Look it up. That was a thing back in the day. But, you know, like I said, good for her. It's always good to see a career redemption for somebody. And, um, you know, and we'll see how things pan out, and of course, it's going to be on Netflix, so that was something I did over the weekend, actually, I can dive into that, I was working on, you know, figuring out what movies are coming out on Netflix this year, as well as films that released last year on Netflix that I wasn't able to get to, um, for my Flixit show, the Flixit show, I'm revamping and revitalizing and trying to figure out ideas for that over on the Patreon, um, so, you know, stuff will be coming with that very soon. I'm just figuring out the ideas I want to go with that one. It probably won't be too much different from the idea I already had, but a lot of catch-up that has to go on as well. I'm trying to decide if I want to throw documentaries in there, but when I was looking at the list of documentaries, I was like, I don't really know if I'm going to watch any of these anyways. So, <laughs> we'll see, man. But, you know, a lot of stuff's coming, and one of the movies releasing this week is a Netflix original film. So, uh, we'll get to that when we get there, but... Uh, these Lindsay Lohan movies, I guess I will be reviewing at some point as well over there on the Flixit show. 
Let's see, The Predator, we talked about this, that has a new show, or movie coming. Um, both, I believe, I believe both are coming. At one point in time, both were coming. Um, this news is on the prequel movie that's coming, entitled Prey, or titled Prey, Jesus. Uh, the movie will be set in the Great Plains in 19, or not 19, 17, 17, 19. Uh, it will tell the tale of the Predator's first journey to our planet, man. 1719, Predator. I mean, what a wild time frame to pick, man. That's going to be that's be pretty interesting to see, without a doubt. Um, you know, and it's good. You know, honestly, a lot of people were a little skeptical when uh, Disney bought 20th Century Fox about what would they do with Alien? What would they do with Predator? And both of them are in the middle of making something right now, man. So... Good on them, man, dude. We'll see where that ends up going, of course. I'll have more news for you when that comes around. That will be a movie I end up seeing, so I'll have a review at some point in time. Um, unless the whole gang here... Nah, I mean, that's not... You know, we'll probably all have our reviews for it, but that's not something we need to all tap into, you know, um, and do a review on. But I'm sure all of us will end up watching it anyway, so I don't know what the hell I'm talking about anyways. Um, so let's see. Last bit of news I have here is pretty insane news. Um, <laughs> so there is a movie coming to Tubi. I think it's how you pronounce it. T U B I Tubi. Um, that is. I, I mean, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. It's a horror movie titled Titanic Six Six Six. <laughs> I mean, apparently there's a trailer out there. I just tried to look on YouTube while I was talking about it. That's so why I was kind of stumbling and pausing with my words there. I didn't see it. Um, I saw the, you know, the fan-made stuff, but I didn't really see the trailer for this one. But if I do a deeper dive, I would have found it, but I don't want to waste too much time here. Um, this is this is wild, man. What a weird idea. So, synopsis goes, 110 years after its namesake's fateful journey the titanic 3's maiden voyage will land at the original site of the wreck although a faithful replica of the original this mammoth cruise ship is built with the most advanced technology ensuring that it has no chance of sinking that's what they said about the first one but when the titanic 3 arrives at the tragic site strange events begin to occur as dark forces from the deep rise to the surface terrorizing all aboard and threatening to repeat one of history's greatest disasters. The movie will star Annalyn McCord. Annalyn McCord, that name sounds familiar. Um, she plays a social media influence. Who is Annal Annalyn McCord? That sounds very familiar. Let me... Annalyn McCord, why do I know that name? Um, <laughs> I mean, this is... This is a very weird... Weird, wild idea. Um... Now to know I didn't watch that. Nip Tuck didn't watch that. Transporter 2 didn't watch that. Why do I know her name? What was she on? The OC, I didn't watch that. I don't know why I know this name. I have no idea why I know this name. Just looking through her and very extensive filmography, geez. Um, I don't recognize anything I would have seen of her. Why I, why do I know this name? This is going to bother the heck out of me. I know this is like great Day of the Dead maybe. Maybe I saw her in that and just saw her name. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, anyways, just again, wasting time. Dead air. Dead air is never a good thing. But Annalyn McCord, for some reason I know her. Um, but yeah, I mean, Titanic 666, what a random-ass idea for a movie. I mean, more power to him, I guess it's being creative. Uh, Titanic 3, that's interesting, because I believe Titanic 2 is a real-life thing. Um, that is happening, and taking the main voyage of the first Titanic. Um... There is a movie called Titanic 2 that is on <laughs> Pluto TV. I might have to just watch these and then get back to y'all. Well, Titanic 666 isn't coming out anytime soon. That's been announced. That's coming out later. But Titanic 2 got a 1.6 out of 10 on IMDb. Wow. Um, a cruise liner set sail on the 100th anniversary of the Titanic's doomed maiden voyage. When a tsunami, Jesus, hurls an iceberg into the ship's path. Damn. The crew and passengers struggle to avoid suffering the same fate as their predecessor. This was released in 2010. Um, 
<laughs> Kev, think I'm going to watch this. Um, it's on Pluto for free. Let's see all other watch options. It's on Tubi for free. It's on Vudu for free. Sling TV if you have it. Roku channel with a premium subscription. Amazon Prime. A 1.6 out of 10. This is one of those... I, I'm just going to... I mean, I'm going a little bit longer into this than I need to. But I think that's just the way I... That sounded wrong, by the way. Sorry. Get your minds out the gutter. <laughs> um, but... Like, I've always been fascinated with the Titanic. Like, always been fascinated with the Titanic. I think it has something to do with the fact that when I was growing up, you know, the film came out when I was young, and the Titanic was a big deal um, at the time. I mean, it's still kind of a big deal. I mean, Titanic's never going to not be a big deal. Yeah, I was like nine years old when the movie came out. So, it was a big thing. I remember being in, it was like a... It was talked about in school, and we had like little projects in school about it, and you know, all this random stuff. And I've just always been really fascinated by the Titanic. That's the Titanic itself, not so much the movie, which, again, nothing is the movie. I haven't really sat down and watched that movie in a long time. Like, honestly, I kid you not, anytime that movie's on TV, I do stop and turn it on, and it's always around the same point where the boat's sinking and the guy falls and cuts the cartwheel, you know, and all that. Um, but I haven't, yeah, I haven't sat down to, like, full-on watch this movie in a long time. But my fascination with the Titanic is the Titanic itself and just the stories and the conspiracies and all this stuff that you can find through documentaries that are out there now. It's just always been fascinated with this thing. Um, so, and like, that's kind of like a goal and dream of mine is like to go to Belfast and see where, you know, the ship was at and all that stuff. Um, but like, this is just, it's so random that there's these movies that are like Titanic 2 and now Titanic 666. And it's like, I'm going to watch them. Like, there's no doubt in my mind I'm going to watch these movies. And like I said that one movie's got it's less than two stars out of ten, but it's like, you know, this is a train wreck I want to see. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's one of those things where it's just like, okay, I got to see this, I guess. Um, so, yeah, I'm definitely going to watch that. I'm a little bit longer on there, but I just, it's maddening to think. It's not, it's not necessarily maddening. It's amazing to think that there's films out here being made like that. But, hey, more power to them, man. Why not? Um, I saw, they actually mentioned this movie as well, Amityville in space, I believe is what they said. Like, there's some random movies out here, man. I mean, this is... I mean, I'm looking it up. Amityville in space. Amityville in space. Yeah, there's a movie. There's literally a movie called Amityville in space. Good lord. <laughs> um, Amityville in space trailer. So there's a trailer out there for you to check out as well. Uh, apparently it's coming out this year. So... <sighs> More power to them, man. They're making random stories. Why not, dude? Give it the old chick skis. All right, so that does it for the news. I think, um, <laughs> and let's see what we got here. Uh, the only thing I really found releasing this week that's kind of interesting, I guess you say there's other stuff that's releasing this week, but I mean, this is the main thing that's going to be releasing is The Atom Project. Uh, it's going to be releasing on Netflix. It is PG-13. One hour and 46 minutes, and it's an adventure action film. Um, after accidentally crash landing in 2022, time traveling fighter pilot Adam Reed teams up with his 12 year old self for a mission to save the future. Uh, this movie stars Ryan Reynolds. Uh, yeah, stars Ryan Reynolds, Jennifer Garner, Mark Ruffalo, Zoe Saldana. So, very, very strong cast here, man. And, you know, again, I'll check it out. Like I said, I got the Flix It show I'm revamping and working on, so obviously that'll be something I'm going to have to watch either way. But I'll give it the old checkout ski. Um, like I said, there's not much else coming out this week, so it'll be pretty easy to check that out and then see what else I can find, right? But that does it, man. That does it for the news and what's releasing this week. So, from there, we're going to jump into my review, of course, obviously. Got to play the trailer for all y'all. So, uh, take a pause for the cause real quick, and then we're going to dive into the trailer. I'm going to have to talk about this Batman movie. Is it the greatest Batman movie ever? That's the question that's been posed since the movie's released. So, be back after the trailer to talk about that. Bruce Wayne. I'm sorry. I wouldn't be bothering you here, but your people keep telling me you're unavailable. You know, you really could be doing more for this city. Your family has
has a history of philanthropy, but as far as I can tell, you're not doing anything. the trailer for The Batman uh, starring Robert Pattinson as PG-13 for some suggested material, drug content strong disturbing content strong language, strong violent content. It is a crime adventure. It is 2 hours and 56 minutes it is released in theaters only right now. It will be hitting streaming on April 19th, 2022 obviously. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes has the movie at a critic score of 86% and an audience score of 89%, while IMDb has it at an 8.6 out of 10. You know, while we're right there, the reason I bring up these scores is not necessarily, you know, oh, that's, that means it's great or that means it's good or anything like that. The reason I bring up the scores of Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb is kind of like the world round knowing of, okay, not everybody is always around the same philosophy of scores now i mean 86 percent, 89 percent, 8.6 out of 10 it's all very close score wise but it's not exactly the same so and i'm gonna be honest with you that 86 percent on rotten tomatoes i've seen some of the stuff that people wrote up uh one of the reasons for not liking the movies because batman's brooding too much fuck off it's batman <laughs> all right but that's why i do it man it's just the worldwide landscape of letting people know that you can like a movie you can dislike a movie it's perfectly fine. It's okay. Not everybody always has the same belief in movie-wise. So that's why I always give the critic score, audience score, and the IMDb score on all the episodes. Because, you know, again, I want everybody to know. You can feel how you want to feel about a movie, baby. It's okay. Uh, synopsis for the film. Batman ventures into Gotham City's underworld when a sadistic killer leaves behind a trail of cryptic clues. As the evidence begins to lead closer to home and the scale of the perpetrator's plans become clear. He must forge new relationships, unmask the culprit, and bring justice to the abuse of power and corruption that has long plagued Gotham City. And as always, I don't have any notes for my reviews. I don't do anything. This all comes from my head and from my heart. So, this freaking movie, man. The Batman. Almost all three hours of it. Masterpiece, as far as I'm concerned. Absolute 100% masterpiece. There was not a single moment... 
during this movie. And trust me, I'm the guy. I've told you plenty of times when I feel like a movie's too long. Could have been snipped here. Could have been one down here. Didn't need that. Didn't uh, need that. You've heard me say it on other uh, episodes of this show about movies. This movie, not a single second of it, I would take away. I had an absolute great time watching this whole movie. I went through every single kind of emotion you want to go through from... Oh man, that was freaking badass to where I wanted to stand up and clap, but I wanted to embarrass my brother because he was there with me, you know. But you know, next time, I don't care, man. I guess stop worrying about other people, just worry about myself. Um, but I mean, that emotion had me freaking tearing up at points. Like, there's everything about this movie is just absolutely 100% spectacular, in my opinion. Like, the story is good, the acting is good, the look is good, the freaking action scenes are amazing. The, you know, the intimate scenes are amazing. They're just, the way this movie is built and put together to me is just so well done that I understand why people are like, is this the greatest Batman movie of all time? We'll get to that in a little bit. You know, so let's talk about Robert Pattinson for a little bit here. He's this guy who's had a great career since leaving Twilight, but people, or since Twilight ended, uh, but people can't get over that at all. They're like... Uh, they're like, oh, who's the Twilight guy and all that stuff. For some reason, they can't get past it. He hasn't necessarily been a part of a big franchise since then. He's kind of been doing his own work and all that, if you will. You know, I mean, he was in uh, Harry Potter and the um, Goblet of Fire, but obviously it was just the one movie and all that stuff. He wasn't throughout the whole franchise like he was with Twilight. Now he's in this Batman movie, which is supposedly supposed to be a trilogy. And we'll see, you know, he'll get, run, you know, that. Obviously, the people still bring up Twilight because they're assholes, but... Um, I don't mean that in a bad way. Look, I don't want to get into the Twilight movies. We'll do that later on time. Maybe that's a flicks it or a nightmare on review it thing that I go through the Twilight movies. But it wouldn't be flicks it. Anyways. Um, but he was great, man. I absolutely loved him as Bruce Wayne and as Batman. Like his character in this movie, this is the year two Batman. He's very fresh into the Batman stuff. He's learning as he's going. He's still dealing with the grief of the loss of his parents. You know, you can still see that on him. I feel like you know, it's one of the kind of the best representations of, you know, because, I mean, we've seen the other Batman movies. We all know the grief he's dealing with and the brooding and all that stuff that he's dealing with. But in this movie, he's like, he's so young and it's so, still fresh in him and he's still, you know, working through his things. And you've seen the trailers and you've seen the I Am Vengeance. You see how he's beating the hell out of people and how he's just badass and all that stuff. And you're like, this is very new Batman. Like, he's still getting together what he is. He has his belief. His beliefs are there, obviously. The Batman belief is there. Uh, the Batman rule, if you will. Um, but he's so freaking good, man. He does such a good job. When he has to be young Bruce, and it's like, you know, you heard it in trailer was playing right there about the philanthropy and all that stuff. And I probably said that word wrong just then, but whatever. Um, and all that stuff. And you see that he's still young. He's still dealing with the loss of his parents. And he's figuring out you know, what he's doing. And the last thing that he really is focused on is the Wayne name he's more focused on the vengeance and getting revenge and making sure that what happened to his parents doesn't happen to anybody else you know doing the Batman thing he's not worried about the Bruce Wayne stuff in this movie which was an interesting thing to see because all the other movies we've seen you know it's billionaire Bruce and he's you know doing all this and he's doing all that and this is the young Bruce Wayne this is the Bruce Wayne that's still growing and learning and processing everything so I liked that man I thought that was really well done and a great job um, from there, I think it's necessary to talk about the Riddler in this movie. The Riddler, the only time we've seen the Riddler before was in the TV show with Adam West and, of course, Jim Carrey's portrayal of the Riddler in, uh, what was it, Batman Forever. I always mix those two movies up. I don't know why. Um, obviously, Batman Robin is a horrendous movie, but, um, maybe it's not me. Maybe we should be more open-minded. I don't know. I haven't watched the movie in a while. The last time I tried to watch it, it took me four days to get through it. That's all I'm saying. And that was last year. Um, but... You know, he's been more like kind of a campy character. The other times he was on the Gotham show, he was different there as well. Um, but this time he's like, you know, obviously we've seen the reports where he's modeled after the Zodiac Killer and he's very serial, serial killer-like in this movie and he's just creepy as hell, dude. Like, so creepy. And that's where our, like, horror aspect comes in and everything is with him as the character and the serial killer aspects of him and... You know, from what you see in the trailer, obviously I don't spoil movies, so I'm not going to go into too much of the stuff he does. But the movie is 
you know, I've, I've talked about in a couple of other episodes where it was being felt like this is pretty much like a horror movie, man. This is, and it absolutely is. Like, it is a horror, thriller, crime, drama. You know, it is all of that. It is a freaking film noir, man. It is a crime thriller starring our Caped Crusader, which is what a fucking Batman movie should be. And it's, again, that's why I love this movie so much. Um, so, the Riddler great so creepy very well played by uh paul dano and i don't know much about paul dano this is my first time ever hearing of him is when he was cast as the riddler um I'm trying to look at his synopsis here he was in there will be blood i haven't seen that he was in little miss sunshine I did see that but i don't remember much of it uh looper unfortunately saw that um <laughs> just kidding i haven't seen looper in a while but i think i didn't like the ending or something the girl next door so he's been he's he's been around but I mean, his freaking performance in this movie is so incredible, dude. Like, he is so unnerving and so creepy with every scene that he's in. I was like, God dang, dude. Like, what a great job. Like, what a great job. Um, I'm not afraid to say... I'm not going to say it's better than Heath Ledger's Joker. That's 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 not something I would say. But it's it's freaking up there, man. The way he, the way he freaking acts in this movie is so good. Uh, Zoe Kravitz as Selena Kyle, Catwoman. Thought she was good. Thought she did a great job. Um, you know, we've obviously there's a Catwoman on the TV show, the Adam West TV show. But you know, movie wise, we you know of course you're coming off of Michelle Pfeiffer, who everybody freaking loves, and you're uh, coming off of um, why am I blanking on her name? Anne Hathaway. She was fine. Uh, we had the Halle Berry movie that a lot of people don't want to talk about, uh, which I'd be honest with you, I don't know if I ever actually watched the movie. Um, but yeah, I thought Zoe was great. Zoe's a talented lady, and I'm glad she got this opportunity after being shunned. Um, and the, she was auditioned for The Dark Knight Rises and was shunned for the Catwoman role there. But she got it this time around, so good for her, man. And she delivers. I think she's I think she's really good throughout the movie. Um, God. Uh, Jeffrey Wright is Gordon. He was great. Like, the freaking... You know, I, everything was great, man. Like, I can't, there's absolutely nothing that I can pick out of this movie and complain about. I know there's other people in the world who complain about it, and that's, you know, that's what you're going to get. People are going to do that. That's fine. That's their opinion. If it is actually their opinion, not based on the fact of, oh, I hate DC, and I'm going to hate everything they do, or I hate Batman, screw this, or um, I'm a Marvel fan, so let me shit on what DC does. Because those people do exist. There's even people... I'm not going to just throw it under Marvel. There are people, this Zack Snyder fans, who are shitting on this movie because they want their Batfleck and, you know, whatever, dude. Batfleck is good. He's fine. But, like, let's not freaking hate on stuff just to hate on stuff for, for sucks, you know, such stupid reasons like that. Uh, the Batmobile. The Batmobile is great throughout the movie. I mean, the, again, just everything is good. I love the story. I love the acting. I love the performances. I love the horror feel. I love the the crime uh, detective work throughout the movie is just it's so good and it's exactly what I would want in a Batman film and I don't know you know I'm trying to figure I don't want to spoil anything so I'm not going to go there it's just it's what I mean he's the world's greatest detective we've always heard this Batman you know the world's greatest detective and now we get a film where it's a detective film and it's like fuck it's so good so now that leads us into the, you know, and of course, two very enthusiastic thumbs up, if you couldn't tell already. I, you know, Batman's an absolute must-see. I have been literally thinking about this movie since seeing it last Thursday. I saw it last Thursday night. Um, and I've been thinking about the movie ever since. You know, I, I can't get it out of my mind. Obviously, it's at the number one spot for me. But the films I've seen so far this year, and it's going to stay there for a while. You know, we'll see how you know other movies do uh, as far as movies that i'm anticipating like the flash and you know dr strange is coming and jurassic world dominion is coming all that stuff we'll see how things go but i don't know how well <laughs> they're gonna fare i guess this movie because going into the year like the oh, flash that's my superhero that i'm so highly anticipating this movie i'm glad ezra's finally getting his movie all that stuff and i love batman don't get me wrong flash is my superhero batman is my favorite hero, you know, kind of thing, um, because I don't, I, th personally, that's me, I know other people call Batman a superhero, they believe Batman's a superhero, that's your duty, that's your job, that's cool, that's awesome, good on you, I don't look at Batman as a superhero, he's a vigilante, that's it, he doesn't have any superpowers, uh, he's smart, he's brilliant, obviously, he's 
you know, he's got the tech and all that stuff, but he's not, he's not superhuman, he doesn't have powers, he can't run fast, he can't fly, he can't, he doesn't have super strength, he can't shoot lasers out of his eyes, all that stuff, um, and, and while we're talking about the hero stuff, and the vigilante stuff, I, I, absolute hero in this movie without spoiling anything, Batman freaking in this movie is just so god dang top notch, dude. So freaking top notch. This is the Batman, in my opinion, this is the Batman I want to see. Um, I can't wait to see what they do with the sequel. The sequel is heavily rumored to be following the Court of Owls, which I could see with, you know, some of the storylines uh, in this Batman movie. I could see them going Court of Owls uh, for the next film, for sure. Without, again, I can't spoil anything, but... You know, this is the Batman you want to see. Fucking, you know, brutal. He's fighting. I mean, if you played the Arkham games, this is the Batman you... you, know, you, you this is the, pretty much that, man. Detective work, brutal fight scenes, badassness, you know, um, and being a hero. You know, that's that's what you want, man. That's what you want from your Batman, if you ask me. So, now we get into, is it recency bias? Or is the movie really so amazing that it is... Deserving of the fact that it's being called it the greatest Batman movie of all time. I believe currently that is The Dark Knight. For a lot of people, The Dark Knight is the number one Batman movie. For some people, their favorite Batman movie of all time will be Batman 1989. There's a lot of people who love Batman Returns. That's the one, Batman Returns. Um, I don't know why I'm struggling with these names sometimes. <laughs> I haven't watched all these freaking movies over and over again so leading into the batman obviously i'm super excited love it and again love batman one of my favorite characters one of my favorite heroes all day i mean it's flash and batman are like freaking tied right there a flash just like a smidge ahead um again flash superhero batman's my hero right so leading up to the movie like the day before seeing the movie i watched batman 89 just i love batman 89 love michael keaton and i watched the dark knight right those are my two favorite batman movies it's still so good. There's still obviously different time periods. You know, obviously what Batman Begins and The Dark Knight did help build this new age of uh, comic book movies, if you will, about how be, how to make it more grounded in real life, and and which is crazy to say because you got all these like super soldiers and you know Supermans flying around and you know talking trees and whatnot. But you know what I mean. Make it as realistic as possible. And it, uh, honestly, in my opinion, that all started with you know X Men kind of tried to get there but it was perfected with batman begins and then move forward right so obviously the dark knight is a great film right we can't sit here and act like it's not and i understand why a lot of people put it at number uh, as their number one batman film and if it is your number one batman film good on you but when i recently watched this movie i came to the conclusion with it that heath ledger is this movie you know his performance as joker is what everybody always talks about with that movie like nobody really ever talks about anything else with that movie right except for batman's voice which we'll get to in a second no <laughs> we'll get to it in a little bit but all obviously everything that people always talk about with that movie is Heath Ledger's joker man god he was incredible it's one of the best performances ever it's the greatest comic book performance of all time which, rightfully so, I'm not going to sit here and disagree with. That is an incredible performance. It's one of the greatest, if not the greatest performances I've ever seen in a comic book movie. Won an Oscar for it, rightfully so. With that said, Joaquin Phoenix also won an Oscar for his performance as the Joker. Um, that's not to take away anything from Heath Ledger. He absolutely 100% deserved it. He was bar none incredible. But like I said, when you look at that movie, and this is how I felt when I was watching it too, recently, like last week, just a couple days ago, that the movie is really good, but, you know, the bat voice annoys me in that movie, and it got even worse in The Dark Knight Rises. Um, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good movie, but as time goes on, I'm like, if, you, if Heath Ledger wasn't there, would that movie be as held as high regard as it is? In all honesty, there's awesome scenes in it. I'm not going to sit here and act like there isn't. But most of them, of course, obviously involve Heath Ledger's Joker. I mean, you take you take that away. I'm trying to remember. I mean, I guess when he's getting um, Lau, right, from 
the building that's pretty cool with the sky net you know, sky hook or whatever that's cool but I mean overall I mean that movie it adds to the Joker's movie with the Batman I feel like the whole freaking movie's good like everything is spot on everything's solid Batman's great Riddler's great Gordon's great freaking Catwoman's great everything's great throughout that movie you know, and I mean, of course, Commissioner Gordon's awesome in The Dark Knight, don't get me wrong. Christian Bale, really good, but I hate his freaking bad voice so much. I really, honestly, I'm sorry, I do. Actually, I'm not sorry, it's my choice. I, I don't like it, I don't like it. It kind of takes me out of the movie. And like I said, it gets worse in The Dark Knight Rises. Um, so yeah, I put the Batman ahead of The Dark Knight. I have no problem doing that. I absolutely love this movie, I can't stop thinking about it. I don't know if I would be feeling this way if I didn't recently rewatch The Dark Knight right before watching this movie. But to me, this is the quintessential Batman movie. This is what a Batman movie should be. The detective work, the, you know, learning, the growing, I mean, the realism, the freaking groundedness, the story is so good. Like, I understand why it's almost three hours. It's so good. You're building to something. You're driving home the story. Everything is well done. You're going to come out of this... Obviously, there's people like, ah, oh, Robert Pattinson can bring all this. But you can talk about multiple things throughout this movie that are just rock solid. And all of these scenes that are just memorable from the stuff you see in the trailer with the Batmobile and the hallway scene with the guns uh, going off and you see Batman coming forward and kicking ass and all this stuff and this badassness. But the detectiveness that he does in this movie is just... <sighs> spotless, man. The movie is spotless to me and I say yes. It does deserve to be called the greatest Batman movie of all time. It absolutely 100% deserves that. And this is, of course, not to change anybody's opinion. I have your opinion. If your favorite Batman movie of all time is The Dark Knight, let it be, baby. If your favorite Batman movie of all time is freaking um, Batman Begins, awesome. If it's Batman 89, awesome. If it's Batman Returns, awesome, dude. If it's Batman and Robin, we get a fucking talk. <laughs> I want to know how you get there. But, like, I'm not going to sit here and tell you what is or isn't. I'm just going to give you my feelings and my opinions, man. And again, The Dark Knight is a really good movie. But to me, that is Heath Ledger's movie. Bar none. End of it. You know, Batman's got some good moments in it, but I don't think his moments in that movie outshine Robert Pattinson's moments. Um, that's just me. Like I said, that's just me. I think Robert Pattinson outshines this movie. I think he nails everything that he needs to do, be it Bruce Wayne and Batman, dude. So, yeah, to me, the Batman is the quintessential Batman movie. It hit every single area that it needs to hit in a Batman movie for me. And that's my opinion, man. So, yeah, the Batman is now officially my favorite Batman movie. Um, as far as, like, my favorite Batman, that's probably... Probably will always be Michael Keaton. I don't know if I can ever change that. Obviously, this is our first film with Robert Pattinson. I'm sure as time goes on, he can you know, get there, but I just have a soft spot in my heart for uh, Michael Keaton. Uh, and again, this is all my opinion, right? We all have our own opinions. There's no definitive answer to any of this. You can have polls, you can have votes, you can have rankings and all that stuff. Cool, dude. At the end of the day, it's all subjective. And my favorite Batman will probably always be Michael Without a doubt, my favorite Batmobile is always going to be Michael Keaton Batmobile. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's freaking amazing. Um... But yeah, I mean, the Batman blew me away. I can't stop thinking about the movie. I want to see it again and again and again and again in theaters. I just, I can't, I can't get away from it, man. I cannot stop thinking about that movie. So, that's me, dude. Um, and a lot of people are kind of feeling the same way. So, that's cool. And I know some other people are feeling different about it. Um, that's cool, too. Like, I think my brother has said he wasn't in love with it like everybody else. And that's fine, man. I have better taste than my brother anyways. <laughs> I had to say it. You know, I'm just kidding. Maybe. Anyways, that's going to do it for this episode. <laughs> Appreciate you all following along with me, listening along as I jammed it out here, man. I uh, went long on the Batman, but I felt like talking about that. Again, there's no wrong answers here. You love The Dark Knight. That's your favorite Batman movie. Awesome, dude. Have a great time with it. For me, uh, it has been topped by The Batman, for sure. Um, and I hope to go see that movie again this week. Like I said, there's nothing coming out. Next week, X comes out, which I'm interested in seeing that and becoming like a big... Jenna Ortega fan, man. I'm not an A24 
fan. We've talked about that numerous times on this on the show. But Jenna Ortega, she's blowing up. She's amazing. She's getting she's really good, dude. She's getting really good. Uh she could she's working her way into being one of my favorite actresses. Young actress. She's killing it. She's doing a great job. Can't wait to see what she does in that movie. And of course, can't wait to see her as Wednesday Adams. It's gonna be incredible. And she was just in Studio Six Six Six, man. Like I said, she's blown up. Um that comes out next week. Uh, but this week, again, opening movie theater wise. So, man, I might go see the Batman one or two or three more times. <laughs> but as for this episode, that'll do it. Um, again, make sure you listen to Mr. Wonderful Show. He will have his review of the Batman. We'll see where he ranks it. Maybe he, maybe it's his favorite Batman movie of all time. Maybe it's not. Uh, Zach talked about it on um, the YouTube when he was playing Rocket League with the Batmobile. Check that out over on the Throw Me Podcast Network's page. He did Rocket League with the Batman. And um, check it out. I'll do, be doing a WWE live stream, hopefully, on there, um, if I figure out how to do it. Speaking of, actually, there's a bit of news I didn't have written down. The WWE games may be going to EA, and I don't know how I feel about that. Because they were THQ for a while, now they're 2K, and 2K's run into some troubles recently. Now they're talking about EA, which EA's been doing sports games for a long time. Madden is one of the biggest games ever it's always complained about people complain about it every year but every year it's still a huge game so we'll see what happens man we'll see what happens i mean to hear ea sports is in the game which i don't even know if they still do that but to do that before a wrestling game would be so freaking interesting dude i remember how excited i got when this is fox sports came on before smackdown so we'll see dude so look at there late news at the end but that does it man that ends this episode i appreciate you all listening along with me um, as we're getting close to 100 episodes, we're getting there, man. We're getting there. A uh, the little engine that could. Some shows, you know, just having a great time, dude. Just having a great time. So, appreciate you. Thanks for listening along. To follow uh, uh, Throw Me Podcast Network on Facebook and YouTube. My throat's going away. Um, but as for always, remember, the happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one remembers to turn on the light. Talk to you, my pretties, next week. Thank you for joining me this week. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to get updates on all new episodes. As well, follow me on Twitter at review underscore it underscore Rob. Stay tuned for more adventures.